Hi there, it's Sandy from Soaring Through Second and I'm going to show you how to organize um, reading groups or math groups or whatever kind of groups you want using Google Forms and Google Sheets. It's pretty much the best thing ever, especially if you're working with a team of teachers. So let's say you're getting ready to do assessments and you want to regroup kids. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to New and I'm going to create a new form. And it will it should say more down here, I don't know why it doesn't, but I'm going to click on Forms and I'm going to create a brand new form. I'm going to title the form, um, let's just call it Spring Reading Assessments. Oops. Okay, make sure you click up at the top two to name the form. It'll automatically name it, whatever you named it down here, so you can change that if you need to or add any extra information that you want to up there. So for the first question, I'm going to, I want to know what the student's name is. So I'm going to put student first name and I'm going to split up the names. Um, it's going to be a short answer, so we can type in the student's name here. I'm going to click this button to make it a required question, so I can't accidentally forget to put the student's name in when I'm filling out my form. I'll add another question, and I'm going to do the student last name. And the reason I do it, I separate first and last name into two separate questions, is because sometimes we need to um, organize that way, so it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, if you're working with multiple teachers, you're going to probably want to put the teacher's name in. So I will just do Patterson, and I'm actually going to make this a multiple choice. So all I have to do is click the teacher's name, Smith, and we'll do Jones. So these are my three teachers on my team, so I will make that required again. And then usually I'm we're assessing for some type of score. Um, so you can just put the score here. You can be more specific, ugh, excuse me, specific if you want, but it's just going to be a short answer. So I'm going to quickly type in their number score there. Again, I'm going to make that required. And the last thing I we usually do is if we group kids, their score is going to tell me if they are um, advanced, proficient, basic or below basic and the you can change any of these things and you can eliminate them or you can add more questions based on whatever works for you and your assessment in your team so again I'm going to make that required you can go up <coughs> to the color palette here and if you want to change the color of the form you can do that um, there are some more options in here if you click the little picture button and you've got all of these fun options to choose from you can also upload a picture if you wanted to as well. So once my assessment is all finished, I want my whole teacher team to make sure that they're filling it out too for their kids because we're going to decide where kids are going to go. Kids might be switching classrooms for this special time where we're grouping them based on their needs. So to send it to my teacher team, I'm just going to press the send button. I'm going to go ahead and click on the link here. And this is going to give me a link to this form. You can shorten the URL so it's a little less scary and I'm just going to press Command C on my Mac to copy it and then I'll take that link and I will grab a new window here and I'm just going to oops, I'm just going to um, email them that link. So I'm going to send them the email and I'm going to say, hey, here's our um, reading assessment form. Please make sure you fill it out. So let me show you what it looks like. So I'm just pasting that link and I'm going to go straight to that form. So when they get my email and they click on the link, this is what they're going to see. So they're going to type in the student's first name, student's last name, and then they'll just go in and choose their name, put their score, so whatever their score is, and that would be considered basic, and then submit it. And then you can keep, they would keep going through and adding all of their information for all of their students after they've given that, given that assessment. And once that's done, if you go back to your Google Drive, here is the form and once you start collecting responses so once the teachers start inputting their information and their student information you can click here where it says responses and you can look as, at a summary because I only did the one response you can see it says one here you can look at an individual response so I can see that individual response there but the really helpful part here is this little green sheets button so if I click that I can create a spreadsheet um, and it'll name it the same thing spring, spring reading assessment it'll just say responses and I'll say create or if you wanted to you could create it to it or you could add it to an existing spreadsheet I'm not going to do that right now um, I'm just going to create it 
and then it looks like nothing happened. But if I go back to my Google Drive, I can see here that a, a, um, a spreadsheet has been created. And when I double click on it, all of the information that the teachers are inputting is going to come directly to this form. Now this form is not populated because I just created it right now and I only responded one time. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like once lots of responses are in there. So same, same form, same thing, double click on it. And so here are all of the teachers. And what I love, what we love about this is you can do some really cool things within Sheets to organize it really quickly. So if I wanted to organize my sheet by teacher, so I can see teachers in a group, I can sort the column A to Z. So now you can see all of Mrs. Jones's teachers here, all of Mrs. Patterson's teachers, all of Mrs. Smith's students here. Um, we can also sort it by their, um, by their score. So if I sort it this way, I can see, and then I can go ahead and I can group those kids based on, you know, okay, from 200 to 567, that might be one group. Um, from 600 to 800, there's another group, and you can kind of see the cuts there. You could also, if you wanted to, um, if you highlight the column, and then if you go to Format up here, and then you go to Conditional Formatting, um, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to tell it to do something. So I'm going to say format cell if, if the text contains, so if it says in that cell below basic, I want it to be red. So that's giving me a heads up that whoop, those kids maybe need a little extra help. I'll add another rule and I'll say if the text contains the word basic only, maybe we, we could color that yellow. Add another rule, if the text contains the word proficient, oops, proficient, I'm going to call it green, I want it to show up green, and then we'll add one last rule, if the text contains the word advanced, um, we'll make, oops, we will make it this color. So I can say all done, and now when I look at my sheet here, I've got again those clear cuts, it's, I can see my, my red kids, I can see my basic kids. It just makes it really easy to look at. I can see what their score is, what their teacher is, and then I have information, first and last name. So this is just one way to help you um, to help use Google Forms and Sheets to organize those groups. Again, this could be done with any, any sort of assessment. Um, it can be done with math, and you can change any of these to be whatever will work for you and your team. But the great part is that spreadsheet because that's where um, we're able to group. And I can also um, share this with my teammates. So again, if I click that share button in the top right and I click get shareable link, um, I can copy this link right here and I can again email it to my teammates, my other teacher teammates, and say here are our results, take a look at it. And if I change this to anyone with the link can edit, my teacher friends are going to be able to get in there and they can edit it as well. So we can all be working on the same document at the same time um, to kind of make things simple. So I hope this helps you. If it does, please let me know or let me know how you use um, forms and sheets to make your life a little bit easier.